Okay, let's do the second half of this question. I actually had to start this video again because my explanation wasn't thorough enough. So it says here, the equation f of x minus k equals zero has only one real root. What are the possible values of k? So now what it's actually saying, and, I, and I've drawn it here because I think it's important that you understand, it's saying, if I shift the graph in the y-axis, right, because that what, you, what that k represents, a shift in the y-axis, I either need to shift it up, right, so I either need to shift it up so that the only intercept it has with the x-axis is with, at s, right? And in that case, I would have to shift it, this, this, this a value up so that it's above the x-axis. Or I need to shift it down so that this b value is below the x-axis and the only intercept is this r over here, right? So it's basically saying it only cuts the x-axis in one place. Now please remember that q is negative, right? So this is a negative value. Right, so if I want to move, I'm going to do the move um, where I move B first, right? So basically where I'm going to move it down, right? I know that that move has to be, right, K has to be greater than P. Why do I say that? Well, if I move K down more than P units, it means that B falls below the X axis, right? And that's what we want. So we know that K has to be greater than P. Now, the second one is where we move the graph up and we're looking at Q. Now, we know that in order for K, right, to move up, because it's negative here already, okay, it's negative here already, it's already a subtraction, right, and we know that Q is also a subtraction. We know that those two negatives, when you put it together, are going to be a positive. So, if I have any negative number here that is less than Q, right, if I put it into here, it becomes a plus, and it then will bounce this above, right? It will bounce this A value above the x-axis. So my second condition is where K has to be less than Q. Now, this is very much a thinking level like four, or what we would call problem solving, um, complex thinking, because you have to really understand the visual side of it. But I hope that visual that I drew actually was helpful. I had to really think about how to explain this. Let's do the last question here. Also another sort of problem solving complex thinking. So it says, determine the values of x for which the given graph of f is concave down. So now, what do we mean by concave down? We basically mean, okay, if I look here, right, it's saying, well, we know that this, this is our gradient, right, oh, sorry, this is our cubic, and we've done our gradient over here, okay? We know that that's our gradient over here. And when it says concave down, it's talking about, right, it, it means that you, you're looking at the gradient and you're looking at the negative side of the gradient. So this is the positive side of the gradient, okay? And that's the negative side of the gradient. And when does it change? It changes at its turning point, which we talked about in the previous video. So concave down is on this side. Okay, so that's concave down. And this is concave up. Okay, so we know that concave down is where x, right, is greater than negative one and a half. So remember, you can't say inclusive because remember at negative one and a half, it's its turning point, right? It's got no concavity there, right? It's a stationary point. The concavity or the concave down only starts from negative one going onwards. Okay, so when it talks about um, the concave down, what you're thinking here is you should be thinking about your gradient. Okay, and, and what's important about these questions, they build on each other. So you can see that in order to do this question, I then have to go to my previous questions. Okay, a little bit of a tricky question, but not too bad.